Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and we're going to talk about this Dell R630. If you want to learn more about me and my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hires button up at the top. If you want to support the channel in other ways, there's affiliate links down below for deals and discounts on products and services that we talk about on this channel. And very specifically, this is purchased from Tech Supply Direct. We do have an offer code down below for LTS services that get you 10% off of your purchase if you buy from Tech Supply Direct. And we buy quite a few servers from them. We've been really happy with Tech Supply Direct. The only thing is not all the servers that we bought from them have made it across the studio bench because, well, people are buying them and uh, they frequently get deployed very quickly and I don't always have time to review them. This one's going into our stack, so I have time to review this one and we'll be do it reviewing a little bit more in depth because I have time to uh, do different testing with the different software load on there. Now, we've actually heard back from a lot of you, the audience, uh, that have bought from Tech Supply Direct and I'm very happy to report since we started working with them last year, I've gotten a lot of positive feedback and that matters to me. Um, I've had very... I don't think I've had anyone really complain. One person kind of complained. They said something was wrong and they shipped them a, a replacement part, but that's kind of what you expect if something goes wrong. Uh, so by overall has been extremely positive for the volume of servers. And we do see people who use our affiliate code. So uh, the number of complaints, very, very tiny. Number of people happy, very big. Uh, so we always keep an eye on our affiliates that we work with. We want to make sure that people are happy. Um, I don't want to push a company that wouldn't make you happy. Um, and we do use them ourselves. I, I'm very much on, I don't have offer codes for things that we're not using. So that's important. On to the server here. This Dell R630, this is Dell's 13th generation server. This is outfitted with the iDRAC Enterprise 8 dual 750 watt power supplies. These fancy fans that I really like, these are a dual rotor, dual fan. So you got a one in the front, one in the back fan. I think that's kind of cool the way these pop in and out. And uh, they dual fan in case one fails. So a really solid design here. This is dual processor with 128 gigs of RAM. So we'll walk through the specs a little bit later. Uh, first, I want to just kind of talk about an overview of how the hardware is here. Now, the first question is, why not one of the R730s? Why a 630? And one of the things we wanted was, well, we don't use this uh, for the larger hard drives. This only has the two and a half inch hard drives in the front, and we only have four hard drives in here. This is gonna serve as an application server for XCPNG for us, uh, and storage is facilitated externally via FreeNAS is what this will be attached to. So I didn't really need the extra room. Second, with the seven series versus the six series, you do get, when you have a nice 2U system, you can put a lot more cards in something we just don't need for this particular setup. Matter of fact, uh, we're not gonna be using any of the PCI3 slots at all on this because it already comes with the daughter card on here. So the daughter card in this has got two 10 gig SFP plus ports and, pl and two standard one gig ports. So plenty of connectivity on the back without any add-in cards being needed at all. And with the 120 gigs RAM, we can load plenty of applications on here. Now. When it comes to the configuration of this, uh, it does have the optional CD-ROM slot, which is not in use. It does have, which is really nice, the uh, slot in the front over here. That's gonna be for an SD card for loading the OS. So you can have the OS loaded on there. So if you are doing this with full lights out management, you're able to remote into this, uh, get the console screen. And we'll cover that when we get into the iDRAC part of this. I'll uh, be able to get all into this uh, remotely without having to be physically connected to it. And we'll cover how that works. Now let's take a quick look from the overhead and take a closer look at this. So the dual processors right here, are dual Xeon 2680 at 2.4 gigahertz. This is the V3 processors. We have 128 gigs of RAM, and the 128 gigs is DDR4 ECC memory. And let's take a little closer look at these fans. So they come out and you got the fan on this side and a fan on that side. So you have the airflow going through and both fans spinning at the same time. And obviously they're really easy to swap in case one ever goes bad, you're gonna notice and be able to swap it out here. This little plenum right here, which does come out, will reveal, as you can see here, it's just an airflow uh, to push the air down, but make sure the air goes across right here. So your airflow on these servers kind of uh, follows in that pattern right there across, and it all just snaps in and stays nice and tight. The controller, the perk controller over here is removable. This currently has the perk RAID controller that connects here that brings us to the front end 
which is 12 gigs a second SAS and nearline SAS. So you have quite a bit of speed here. Now this is the higher end per controller and when we get into the uh, finer details of it, we'll cover exactly how that setup works. But you have the eight two and a halfs in the front and it's all controlled through this perk right here. We do have USB inside of it. So we have a little USB connector right here and a couple SATA connectors that come around to the front. But like I said, they're not in use right now is, is if you wanted to put a CD-ROM in there, uh, that would be connected over here via the SATA but that's not in use. Power supplies are hot swappable, so we can wiggle them out real quick, but they're the 750 watt power supplies in here, 94% uh, efficiency rating. So this is a pretty reasonably low wattage server. Now slightly hidden under here is that controller card. It's kind of hard to see it, but there's a, a series of heat pipes and that is to keep the heat away when you have a 10 gig setup, it can get a little bit warm. So they have the heat pipes in here to facilitate it. And that brings us around to the back of the unit with the two 10 gig SFP pluses. And there's only room because of these riser cards in there to cut this over this way. So it's like I said, I can still put another 10 gig SFP on there if I needed to, but it's not really necessary. Now with this particular controller, both of these and the way it's hooked up and integrated to the board uh, can provide full 10 gig line speed with both at the same time. So you get the two 10 gigs, no problem providing full line speed on that. So that's pretty much it for the overview of the hardware. And let's dive into some of the more interesting part with the software and how you configure it and how the uh, iDRAC works. So that's something really nice about these enterprise systems. All right, so the server is all booted up and I'm logged into the iDRAC. Now, I didn't really show this in the back of the, the system, but the iDRAC is completely a separate network interface. So we have the two one gig ports on the back and the two 10 gig SFP plus ports. And then off to the side is the iDRAC. So this has the full enterprise iDRAC controller on there. And that allows us to completely separately manage the system. And I want to comment on this. This is when we booted it up uh, and let it idle down, not when it's at full fan, but when it's kind of, you know, under low power, low usage, you're looking at a 56 decibel from the front and 49 decibels in the back. So that's with both power supplies plugged in up and running. So it's not too loud of a server. It's actually a lot quieter than the 710 servers that I've done in a 720 servers that I've done videos on. So reasonably quiet server, which is good. So if you're wanting to use something like this in your home lab, uh, this particular model is relatively quiet as long as it's not under heavy load. Obviously, once you put under heavy load, that's gonna go out the door. Now, this also has the full virtual console and HTML5. So we're gonna go over to settings. And I do recommend you uh, check this because I, I noticed when I first hit it, it tried to launch the Java one. And if you're not familiar with it, it's kind of annoying and you gotta do a little Java update, but it has the HTML5 virtual console. So we're gonna go here and show when you launch it. Go launch. And this gives us easy direct access to the system without having to you know, do anything special. I can go here and even remotely, this works perfectly fine. I've managed this over a VPN from my house even when I got a remote into a server. And if you need to reboot something, you can reboot the server and we'll go ahead and restart it. And it'll go through the whole settings and away you go. So you do have the keyboard. I can do screen capture. Uh, and like I said, it's the protocol they're using is relatively fast. So it's even over a little bit slower connection. We're local here at the office, but over a VPN, this worked perfectly fine. So you can get into all the bio settings, change all the settings around for the system and see what's on the screen essentially. And this is the actual boot up screen without anything plugged into it. Really nice feature. And one of the reasons I recommend the iDRAC Enterprise so you get all this with it. So while that's booting, and you can also refresh and just see what's on the screen. Just say no signal, refresh it again, and then it's going to get a signal on there. And yep, there we go. Shows what's going on. So diving into the details, power, thermal usage. Um, I said it was a low wattage server. I should, should say probably it doesn't need too many watts to run. So right now, uh, because we rebooted it, it's at about 112 watts. And that's, as you can see, it's going through and bumping up a little bit, but when it's just idling, it idles just under 100 watts, about 98 watts of usage. So relatively uh, power efficient compared to some of the other ones that idle at almost 200 something watts. So uh, you're getting plenty of CPU power and a reasonable wattage usage here. Now the Dell iDRAC has all the other notices for uh, alerting power and everything else, intrusion detection for the case. No, let you know if anything came unlocked. It has full alert setup. And this is usually how we'll configure these is it has the ability to send either SNMP monitoring 
or email alerts. You can set up different alert destinations for both of these. And this is great because that way if there's any problem, if there's a hard drive failure because we're using the PERC controller for the RAID array in this, if there's any failure or drive goes bad, it'll fire off an email and send it over there. Now, the CPUs, this is a little more detail on these, the Intel Xeon CPU E5 2680 at 2.5 gigahertz. Uh, these dual CPUs per the pass mark score are 25711. Um, obviously, it's not like the most in-depth testing of a processor, but it kind of gets you an idea of uh, speed on there. I don't, I don't look them as the uh, end all as benchmark, but kind of give you an idea of the kind of processing power these have. So plenty of cores in here, as you can see. So great for the virtualization task that we're going to be uh, using it for. Memory, like I said, 120 gigs of DDR4 RAM in here. Uh, and then a network device, the integrated NIC. Has all the link statuses in here. Take a second to load. You can see it's up. Now these NICs are not just like the plugins where you have like your adding card. These are a lot more extensive because they support iSCSI F. COE and Pixie Boot. So you have all those features on here. Um, you can set these up as including as an iSCSI storage target. So they have some extra options with this integrated daughter card that's on there. So this is a nice feature to get that with it as opposed to um, just buying some off the shelf cards and putting in there. Nice that you can add the extra NIC cards in there, uh, but these integrated ones really nice and they tie right here into the iDRAG on there. For storage, we have the Seagate Nitro drives. And this is configured in a RAID 10 with just one virtual disk. So when you look at it from the physical disk standpoint, each disk, each pair of disks, I should say, these two make up the first part of the RAID 10. These are the second part and then the two together, uh, giving us a pretty reasonable speed on there. Plus, it's uh, these SAS drives here are quite fast. And then they're not the Dell drives, so that's one of the reasons, uh, if you notice here, it doesn't have, I'm assuming that's why it says unavailable when it says remaining read-write endurance. Um, that's something I've seen before. If you, I believe it tells you that if you get the Dell branded drives, but these are Seagate uh, Nitro drives. But they work great in here, so there's no problem. So, But it still has at least some of the health on there. But, you know, RAID is not a backup, as I've reminded so many people. <laughs> um, so that's important. And because we presented this for XCPNG, it's just one drive and we loaded the OS and it'll uh, partition out the storage. When I do the uh, videos on that, I'll be covering that again a little bit more in depth of why we did it that way because um, there's always a lot of people that have questions about that. But yes, this can do the rebuild and everything and letting it handle it is pretty simple because it'll give us the alerts and it's pretty good performance if you get the Dell per controller that has the memory on there for caching. So that's the type, that's the controller that's on here. It's the one with the cache. And this is all can be created and managed in here, creating your arrays. It's got the uh, battery on there. So, and it's all monitored right here. And you can check the consistency rate, rebuild rate, et cetera. Uh, it's, it's a nice solid system for managing it. But still for my overall storage, like I mentioned before, um, this is going to be where the applications live and the, and the hypervisor lives. But the overall for our, any larger storage needs, we I'll offset that to another free NAS system. Now, I'm not using it, but it does have, like I mentioned before, the SD card where you can set up uh, OSs on there to be loaded to the machine. That way, if you ever remotely need to get in there um, and reload a machine, you don't need to actually get physical access. You preload it with the SD card. Uh, if you can get in there, as you can see, because you can get right to the console, the system remotely. So this is in a data center somewhere. You can get it remotely, see what's going on, reload it if you need to, and get things back up and running. Now, the last thing I'll leave you with here is people always ask, how much did it cost? So you can head over to Tech Supply Direct's website, and I filled this all out. This is the Dell 13 generation PowerEdge 630, 8 bay, 2.5 bay, uh, two and a half inch small form factor, 1U server, configure to order. And I filled out all the configuration except for the storage uh, to match. So you have all the information right here. The storage is where prices can go, well, they get up a lot higher depending on your storage configuration. Maybe you don't need those SSDs and you just need some less expensive spinning uh, rest drives, but they're still going to be have a nice 12 gig backplane. So uh, two times 200 or however you want to do it. If you even want to order storage uh, or maybe you have some storage you want to transplant from one of the other machines that you currently have, there's different options on there. Now, if we do choose... The ones that I have, 4X 960 gig drives, I'll assume these ones are probably the Nitro. So right here it does, uh, well, it bumps the price up quite a bit. But the good news is we have an offer code to get you a discount. Uh, you can apply at checkout when you go to uh, purchase this. So 
That's it for the review of this Dell R630. Leave comments, questions below, or join us in the forums where we can have more in-depth discussion on there. Tell me what you liked, what you didn't hate about it. I will mention that the Dell iDRAC, which is, comes with the iDRAC Express by default, 175 gets you the full enterprise, fully licensed one uh, like I have for this right here. So that's a little box you can check uh, that probably makes a lot of sense. Like I said, I like to be able to have the full management. But then again, if it's a lab and you're trying to do everything on budget, you know, take that for what it's worth and decide what you want to do. Uh, just my suggestion. All right, and thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.